Welcome to Everyday Magic, where we explore adding pops of magic to your everyday life. I'm Michelle Leffler, shamanic energy alchemist and owner of Living Moon Meditation, where I help people find balance in their personal, professional, and spiritual lives. It's my honor to help you incorporate magic into your mundane life. Let's get started. Welcome to Everyday Magic. We are going to get started with a featured quote of this episode. Alchemy is the process of changing lead into gold. Inner alchemy, personal transformation, occurs when we clear our clutter, internal and external, and let go of things that no longer serve us well. This creates balance and space, a place that nurtures contentment, which I believe is true success. Laurie Buchanan. Now today we're going to talk about alchemy. I believe in alchemy, not the literal turning lead into gold kind of alchemy, but the kind that is more esoteric. When I was younger, I did believe in literally turning lead into gold, and I think a lot of people thought of alchemy in that literal sense. And I didn't tell anyone because I knew that they would think I'm crazy, which is weird because, again, I think that a lot of younger people, kids specifically, think in literal terms like that. But I knew that society as a whole would think I was crazy, so I couldn't have that and I didn't talk about it. But since that time when I was a kid, I've grown up and my views on many subjects, including alchemy, have changed. I believe that many of the things we are taught throughout our lives, spiritually speaking at least, are metaphorical. And I believe that turning lead into gold is metaphorical. So what do the lead and gold represent? Us. Ourselves. Lead is our base nature and gold is our higher conscious selves. Our lives are supposed to be about transmuting our base nature into an awakened, higher state of consciousness and that transmutation process is alchemy the practical daily aspects of how to achieve the alchemical change of our natures takes a different path for different people it can come in the form of health and wellness spirituality religion whatever it's different for each person because each person is different But that's not to say that everyone following these various paths are pursuing the kind of higher self-evolution that constitutes alchemy. There are plenty of health buffs who could not care less about their spiritual consciousness. And we all know that if religion in and of itself were the answer, then millions of people would have achieved enlightenment. The path isn't the answer, although it is important. The path is the process but only if you want it to be. The entire purpose for my business, for Living Moon Meditation, is the pursuit of alchemy. I am pursuing my higher conscious self. And for most people who are going to be listening to this podcast, you are also pursuing your higher conscious self. So everything here within my realm is about alchemy. My personal life, my business life, it's all alchemical. And I welcome you to join me in my adventure. So I want to tell you a little bit about my spiritual journey so you understand some of the alchemical process that I've been going through in the past uh, decade plus of my life. Actually, I will say my whole life, but the majority of the transformation has occurred in the past little over a decade. And you'll see that as you listen to my story. I was born into a Christian family, and I was raised as what I term Babdecostal. My parents divorced when I was four, and I spent one weekend with my father in the Church of God and the other weekend with my mom's family in the Baptist Church. 
Now, if you know anything at all about different Christian denominations, you will know what an oxymoron it is to put Baptist and Pentecostal together. And if you are not familiar, rest assured when I say that the two are about as diametrically opposed as you can be between two Protestant Christian denominations. The belief systems other than Jesus are completely polar opposites, but that's neither here nor there other than to say that that's how I grew up. Now, I also grew up with what is known as the Protestant work ethic, and labor of any kind was praised, and it was drilled into me that if I wanted anything out of life, that I would have to work for it, and not just work for it, but work hard for it. Um, Work was supposed to be just that work. It was supposed to be labor, and that's how you deemed yourself worthy of anything in life was how hard you worked for it. So I grew up not expecting handouts of any kind in anything and believing that accepting any kind of help was a show of laziness. And above all else, I was raised to believe that Christianity meant believing in the tenets of the church without question. If I had questions, I learned not to ask them. It was more important to have faith and believe than it was to understand. Knowing or understanding was not necessary. All that was necessary was to believe what was taught. Now, if you know me, and some of you listening to this do, and those of you who don't are going to get to know me (laughs) through this podcast, but you'll know that I have always struggled with being a people pleaser. And I think part of that stems from my parents' divorce. Now, it doesn't really matter what caused it. I have always struggled to live an authentic life because the authentic me doesn't always lead to approval. And I have hidden myself and tried to live my life based on what makes other people happy for so long, and that included blind allegiance to my religion of birth. I had questions, but I never asked them because asking questions meant that I was bad or that I didn't have faith or that I didn't believe. And for a long time, I was fine with that. I pushed aside my doubts and my questions and I refused to think for myself. And instead, I insisted that I believed what I was taught, even though deep down I had these questions and I didn't necessarily believe it all. Because to me, it didn't all make logical sense, but logic wasn't even part of the equation. So I hid my authentic self. Now, in May 2011, my life changed dramatically. I came home from work and found that my husband at that time had passed away. I was 31 years old and he was 24. To say that that day changed my life forever is an understatement. It's cliche to say that, but it's also the truth. My life changed forever on that day. After the initial phases of grief, I started to look at my life and I began to have little doubts about my faith. I began to ask myself questions and it wasn't long until I decided that I really wanted to ask these questions. The faith that I grew up with was not welcoming to asking these things, so I began to look elsewhere. Now, I had always felt a special connection to Judaism, and so that is where I turned, because it made sense to me. And I began reading everything I could about Judaism and gravitating more and more toward it as a culture and a religion. Now, it wasn't a linear path, but in 2016... I completed my conversion to Judaism, and um, I sat before a bait den, a rabbinic court, and I entered the mikvah, and I had a full conversion to Judaism, and that was in May 2016 when that process was complete, because it is a process. So, part of the process of conversion was choosing my Jewish name. You know, a lot of convert women choose names like Devorah or Ruth 
but that didn't speak to me. And I chose my name by looking at my life. Now, one thing that resonated with me was my focus on life. And I finally felt that I was living an authentic version of my life. So I also thought about life in terms of my husband's death. I was quite literally still living. So I chose the name Haya, which means life. But I was torn between life and the moon because I've always loved the moon and spiritual witchy types of women often do have a special resonance with the moon. Now, the moon's feminine energy speaks to me and the moon has special significance for Jewish women. So I also chose to have a second name and that is Levana, which means moon. So my Hebrew name, my Jewish name, quite literally means living moon, Haya Levana. Now, that's actually the name that I chose for my business when I created my business. Um, I figured what better way than to honor myself through my business, and I chose my Jewish name to also be my business name. So my name is Haya Levana, and that means Living Moon, and that is the name of my business. Now, it's been several years since my conversion. It's now 2022, so it's been a while. And I have made Judaism a fitting part of my life. It speaks to me, and it's where I find the most meaning in my life. But I haven't remained static in my spiritual journey. Now, Judaism encourages questions, which was something that my flavor of Christianity being brought up did not, um, but Judaism does, and I still have plenty of questions, and I love that my faith, my adopted faith tradition encourages me to ask questions, and so while Judaism is my religion, I don't always practice it in a traditional or stereotypical Jewish way, and I blend many different religious beliefs into my personal practice. And I have added many aspects of Buddhism into my walk, as well as Celtic spirituality to honor my Scottish heritage. And I infuse a lot of earth-based hoodoo and conjure into my walk as well. Now, I'm not going to be teaching most of these things to you um, because they're not necessarily my traditional path like the path that I was raised into or converted into or as part of my heritage. Some of these things are ones that I chose for myself so I'm not qualified to teach them to you. But things like Judaism I will weave in and things like um, Celtic spirituality I will weave in because those are things that are part of my culture in some way. So those things I am qualified to talk about and teach about and that kind of thing. So I will. So just be aware of that aspect as well. But I'm becoming more vocal in my spiritual and personal beliefs. And that's part of the alchemical process of becoming who I am. Because the past me, the base nature of me would never talk about these things because I didn't want to offend someone or I didn't want to bring judgment upon myself by not pleasing the people around me. But now I just really don't give a fuck. So I'm going to talk about who I am. And if somebody doesn't like it, then they can just, you know, go on with themselves. So that is my alchemical story to date in a nutshell. And there will be more to my journey as my life progresses. And now the astro forecast. January 14th, Mercury turns retrograde at 6.41 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Also on January 14th, Ceres turns direct at 4.21 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. January 17th, we will have a full moon in Cancer at 6.48 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. January 18th, Uranus turns direct at 10.25 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Also on January 18th, 
the true north node enters Taurus at 1.50 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And on January 19th, the sun enters Aquarius at 9.39 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Woo Book Recommendation Our book review is for a nonfiction book called The Hidden Life of Trees, What They Feel, How They Communicate, and it is by Peter Wallabin. Most magical types of people are at least somewhat into plants and trees. So while this book is more on the science side than the woo spectrum, it's still a great recommended read. Now, I am not an overly scientific person. I was not encouraged in science growing up. Not because of being a girl, but because it didn't necessarily fit into the Christian worldview I was raised with. Some science was fine, but other science, not so much. So while I am intrigued by science, I'm not a very science-minded person. But this book, I absolutely loved it. I learned so much reading it. This book is small but mighty. There are 36 chapters and approximately 240 pages, so it's not a big scholarly tome, but it is full of facts and information. The chapters are short, and it's an overall quick read. Most people aren't going to read this book in an afternoon, but you can easily get through several chapters in one sitting and feel like you're making progress, and that's what I like in a nonfiction book. If you want to learn something about trees and how they communicate, then you will definitely learn more than a little something from this book, and you'll walk away from it with all the feels for trees. Interested in trees? Give this book a try. The Hidden Life of Trees by Peter Wallabin. Love Everyday Magic Podcast? I'd love to have you give me a five-star review over on Apple Podcasts or on your favorite podcast app. Want more magic with me? Join my free Facebook community, Bad Witch Society. It's the perfect place for anyone who's ever been told their brand of magic or witchcraft isn't right. Your magic is valid. Let's celebrate it together. You can find it at facebook.com slash groups slash bad witch, all one word. I have the link in the show notes for you. And if you're into Jewish magic, give my other podcast a, li- a listen. You can find Jewish magic podcasts on the same platforms as this one. Time for the witchy news. As January 1st, 2022 article in the Wall Street Journal said, Scotland moves to pardon thousands executed as witches 400 years later. And while it's never too late to rectify the sins of the past, current impetus in Scotland is being taken note of all over the world. Some evangelical pastors in Nigeria are using current witchcraft hunts there to bolster their church numbers. Witch hunts are also happening currently in Tanzania, India, Papua New Guinea, and Malawi. In other news, a coven of witches in Kentucky has cursed a West Virginia senator for opposing President Joe Biden's Build Back Better Act. Coven members invited non-member witches to join them on the winter solstice for the cursing. You can read both of these articles by visiting the links in the show notes. Do you have a witchy question you're itching to have an answer to? Send me an email and I may answer it in an upcoming episode. It might also become the topic of an upcoming episode. You can send me questions to hello at livingmoonmeditation.com and I have that link in the show notes for you. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Everyday Magic. It's truly been my pleasure to talk to you today. If you liked this episode or you think it will be useful for someone else, please consider leaving a review on your favorite podcast app. If you've got any questions, send me a DM on Instagram at Living Moon Meditation. Remember, it's all about real magic for your real life. See you next time.